stellar guest this evening. You do a great job producing the show, my friend. We've got Jared <laughs> Greenberg, NBA TV host and NBA on TNT reporter. Jared Greenberg, how are you? What's up, fellas? Edgar. Look at my old ex coworker. <laughs> Yo, I haven't seen you in forever, my man. How about how about a little cheers for you, huh? <laughs> How you doing, man? I would think, Jared, I would think you'd want to avoid Edgar at all costs, actually. <laughs> oh, uh, Randy hit me up and asked me to do this. And I said, I've never spoken to Bobby C in my life, but I've I've heard about his work throughout New York, and I want to speak to him. Hopefully it's only good things. I mean, and how about that Georgia Tech jersey behind you, too, huh? Yeah, I mean, it, it's funny because we talked about it earlier. I don't know if you got a chance to listen to the first part of the show, but, um, you know. I was, ago, I was actually distracted by uh, Frankie Ice's pom-poms talking about the Nets. About His the pom-poms Nets. out there were – it was it was weird. I was having like a weird Twilight Zone moment with him taking a break from talking about the Knicks. I know he's doing like Yes Network stuff. So, like, the pom-poms he got for the Nets was just like throwing me off. So, I missed everything you said about Georgia Tech, which is literally I could throw a stone out of my balcony and hit Georgia Tech from where I live. Well, I think it's ironic. For, for some reason, I tend to piss off NBA players is pretty much the moral of the story. Many years ago, we had Marbury on the show. I'm clearly a huge Marbury fan, yeah. but he took offense to some criticism from reporters like myself. And then just a couple of weeks ago, Baron Davis was on the show with us here on the podcast. Yeah. And he took some offense to my criticism of James Harden in the postseason. So I don't know what it is. I love Harden. I love Marbury. I love Baron Davis but I just can't win when it comes to an NBA player. Well, good thing good thing for you. I don't know if you know this about Bobby. I've never played a second in the NBA. So <laughs> you're in luck. Let's criticize some players. <laughs> <laughs> Ed, you want to start off with the questions or can I, can I take the time here? Jared, you know, first I want to say, you know, I'm so proud of you. Um, I remember uh, when we first started and um, you. watching your rise is, you know, you know, yo, you know, oh, you know, how, you know how the NBA family is, man. Once we yeah. see people grow, you know, we give you a standing ovation. I definitely Thank want to you, say to you, and that makes me proud. I appreciate it, man. You guys, uh, in large part, raised me uh, in Secaucus, and and you know, really taught me how to grind my teeth and and uh, you know, do the dirty work. And for a long time, you know, I was um, a lot of people don't know that. You know, so NBA, for those who are listening who are hardcore NBA fans who don't know, NBA TV is now owned and operated by Turner Sports, which is down in Atlanta where I live. But initially, it was up where kind of kind of where the replay center is now, where everybody hears about that. And that's where I really uh, got my work in when the NBA still owned and operated NBA TV and guys like Edgar were up there. And um, I would be pulling double duty. I'd be working like at News 12 you know, whether it be on Long Island or Westchester or the Bronx or Brooklyn. Um, and I'd work the night shift and I'd do like the 10 o'clock news. And then I'd rush in my car and run to Secaucus and work with Edgar and voice highlights for the overnight and do that until like three in the morning. Uh, and then, you know, go home and do it all over again the next day. And it was, it was the greatest experience ever. And, and, you know, I used to, I used to wonder why I was doing it. I'd drive home. I'd be probably sitting in traffic on the GW bridge and I'd be like, shit, man, this, this is rough. And I'd be like, you know what though? I just got paid to voice a LeBron highlight, you know, like this is awesome. Um, it really got the, the, the bug in me, uh, and, and really motivated me. And then when, when Turner had the opportunity to buy NBA TV and, and take it over and I got the opportunity to move down to Atlanta, it was just, you know, an opportunity I couldn't pass up. But guys like Edgar really raised me. Jared, I think that's a great place for us to start, too, if we're going to criticize some players or talk about some You're going to criticize players. me? Yeah, maybe a little criticism for you, too. Good, please. Uh, <laughs> you know, we talk about LeBron James often because I still think he's got to be right there in the tippy top of best players in the league. Maybe, again, best player of all time or arguably could be right there in that conversation. Where do you have him, Bobby? Uh, I, I think he's second to Michael Jordan, but right. at least in my lifetime. I feel like if you're going to talk about great players that you've right. gotten a chance to watch, to me, he's number two to MJ, and only because of my age and what yeah. I've seen so far. But no knock to LeBron James. I think if you're going to lose to Michael Jordan, not a bad thing. But, uh, you know, uh, conversations that Edgar and I often have about this season and some of the players that are in that MVP conversation for this year, uh, LeBron James has got to be right there. Now, of course, this week, big upset with the Sixers yep. beating the Lakers. I know a lot of people advocating for Joel Embiid to be in that conversation. I think so far through this quarter of the season definitely deserves to be there. Wanted to get your thoughts on that 
that game since it's only a regular season game yeah. and then just what LeBron James has been able to accomplish at such an, a late age in his career. Well, Bobby, I think you bring up, you, you said something right there at the end that was really interesting. You know, only a regular season game. And what I think um, is fascinating that's happened in the last couple of years in LeBron's career is that he all of a sudden, almost out of nowhere, and, and there's probably a lot of reasons why that we don't need to get into, but he all of a sudden has prioritized the regular season. There was a point in his career where he minimized the MVP trophy, which was because he minimized the importance of the regular season, which I don't blame him for because he was prioritizing championships and the Larry O'Brien, right? Like, I, I totally get it. But what I think people miss out on, and, and it's unfair to the voters, is that the MVP trophy only goes to guys based on what they do from game one of that season to game 82 of that season. And when you take off two weeks for a season and say, this doesn't matter to me, then the voters have to take that into consideration. And all of a sudden, the last couple of years, there's been something about LeBron. And I don't know if it's, it's him worrying about history and his legacy or more so about I got to show up game 32 because I got to teach my team the importance of playing the right way so it translates to the playoffs. Maybe that has a lot to do with it. But I don't know if you guys know what's going on right now. Anthony Davis is not playing. The Lakers are on the verge of losing to the Pistons tonight, and LeBron's playing. So not only did the Lakers lose the other night to Philly, and Embiid put up a monster number. Listen, LeBron put up filthy numbers too. But LeBron on the back half of that night, uh, on the back half of the back-to-back, -back, is about to lose in Detroit to arguably the worst team in the NBA. So the Joel Embiid argument starting in one minute and one second is about to be on fire around the NBA. What's more impressive, Jared, is what – he is doing right now, LeBron James, more impressive than, let's say, what Tom Brady's doing in the NFL at 43? That's a really hard question. Um, and I hate I hate being that guy to talk to the NFL because, like, I used to be an NFL guy. I used to work for the Giants back when I was working with Edgar when I was in Secaucus. But I'm not, I haven't it's been an NFL cool guy. Week. I got to hit you with some of it. You I know, I know. I, know. <laughs> um, I would say it's more impressive what LeBron is doing from the standpoint of LeBron does more for his team on a nightly basis than Le than Tom Brady has to do, right? Like, he only plays offense. And even offense, he's got, like, three great running backs, right? Like, and he's got 10 great targets that he throws to, plus, you know, a good offensive line. LeBron's got to do it on both ends. He he's got to bring it every night. And, and I think that, you know, uh, what LeBron's doing right now is filthy. It's it, it, it's it's crazy. And listen, I, I didn't want to throw, you know, garbage on him for what I was just talking about. I was just saying what the Twitterverse is going to bring up in the next 24 hours. Now that Embiid beat LeBron, and then LeBron lost to the Pistons. I I, I agree with you. I think uh, LeBron, he knows this is the tail end of his career. Maybe he got two years, three years left. And I think it's all about legacy right now. And yeah. if he wins one more MVP, and hope, I'm hoping, because I hope he wins two more titles, just to tie Jordan. To be the guy, because I I, I, I want to say he's number one. He's got if he wins two yeah. more titles, he will be number one, cemented number one. And I feel like he's taking every game like it's his last game because he knows his career is on, is on the tail, uh, you know, on the backside of his uh, career. Yeah, and the thing that's crazy too is that like we talked about because of that Danny Green podcast in that short off season about LeBron's going to show up, you know, a month into the season. I almost feel like LeBron watched the last dance like all of us during the pandemic. Totally is in tune with that, with how Michael's legacy all of a sudden, you know, 25 years, 30 years later, took a bump up because of a TV program that America had nothing else to do but lock into and watch every Sunday night. And, and LeBron's like, all right, cool. I can't catch you with going six and zero in the finals, but here's what I can do: I can be the first. Listen, other players have won three championships on three teams. 
he's going to be the only guy who's the best player on three teams to win three championships. He's going to be the only guy to win three finals MVPs on three different championships. He's going to be the only guy at the age 36 to be in the MVP conversation, maybe win the MVP. And I think he's trying to play 72 games this year. Like he's he's got no space jam too, Jared. That's right. He is. And my company's putting it out. Warner brothers tune into that. It's going to be good. I'm pissed that I wasn't in it. Um, But yeah, like think about this dude. Listen, I hate the argument that because he's 36 years old in his 18th season, that's why he should win the MVP. Doesn't work that way. That's not how we vote on MVP. We vote on MVP taking away all the bias of, or you're supposed to at least, of it doesn't matter whether you're in your first year, your seventh year, or your 18th year. He's doing remarkable things right now, and he's certainly in the conversation. But the fact that he's not sitting out a game yet, I get that he's playing in his lowest minutes per game of his career, but the fact that he has not sat out a game yet tells me he's on a mission that it's more than just winning another championship. He is he is totally in tune and locked in with how America and the voters are looking at him. Are those two guys on your Mount Rushmore for NBA greats? Are you going LeBron, Jordan, and then who are the other two? Or are you giving me four different guys in that conversation? So what? How, what what's Mount Rushmore? Is it four or five? It's five. Oh, five. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. yeah okay. Um. Yeah. So I'm 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 Michael LeBron. I'm with you, Bobby. I'm I'm Michael LeBron Kareem. Um. And then and then I get a little I get a little different from people. Um. Probably go Magic. Probably the last one. Um, maybe Wilt, maybe Wilt, five. Mm. Yeah, I, thought, I thought it was four on, on Mount Rushmore. I, I don't know. I'm not the biggest history guy. I, 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 I think it's Mount Rushmore is five because it's start, starting five. Starting five. All right. Well, maybe we don't have to say Mount Rushmore. We'll just say the starting right. five. It's incorrect. All right. Yeah. So that, that's my that's my four then. Yeah. So uh, now, you know, you look at what the Nets are doing um, in Brooklyn. What, what are your thoughts with uh, – James Harden joining the team and the whole, uh, you know, Kyrie Irving, you know, leaving the team and coming back. So can I tell you a quick story? So um, I love basketball because of my father, right? And all of us who grew up in New York, we have fathers who like are diehards and that's the way it is. And my father grew up a Knicks fan, but because the Knicks were so bad when I was growing up and, and I was so into the Nets, uh, growing up in North Jersey, my father became a diehard Nets fan. And he was tech. My father just learned how to text like six months ago. <laughs> and he starts texting me and he goes, the, N- the Nets are not going to trade for Harden, right? And I go, I-, I don't know. They might. And he goes, well, if they do, they better give up Kyrie. And I go, well, that probably won't happen, but I get what you're saying. And the night the trade happened, I'm on the air. I'm live on NBA TV and my father's blowing on my phone. Like, you're watching me on TV. Like, you know that, like, I can't answer you now, right? He called me, actually. He called me while I was on TV. Like, you know how this works, right? Like, I'm live. I can't can't answer the phone. And he goes, he leaves me a voicemail. He goes, I'm never watching the Nets ever again. I'm never. My father was such a Karis Levert and Jared Allen fan. He called me earlier tonight. He goes, he goes, you know, their defense is terrible. He goes, you know what they could use? They could use Jared Allen right now. I go, dad, you're exactly right. I go, I, I get it. I get, I, I'm with you. Um, it's interesting how it worked. You know what it's looked like? You guys ever go on like a date with like a really, really good looking girl? Like Not Edgar, but me all the time. Yeah, I, I get it. Yeah. I, I don't blame you. Yeah. Edgar, I'm sorry. Edgar, I'm, I'm, I'm sorry I included you in this part. Yeah. Of the Bobby, you know what I'm talking about. So you go on a date with like a really, really good looking, like you know she's out of your league, right? She is totally out of your league. And you go on one date and you're like, oh my God, I got a chance to go on a second date with this girl. Holy crap. She's going to let me go on a third date with this girl. And what's happening with the net is you're just on your best behavior. You're not showing her any of who you really are. That's what the nets are doing so far. Kyrie has showed the best of himself. James Harden has shown the best, like a couple of games ago, 
James Harden looked like Kobe in that game for me. Remember a, remember a bunch of years ago when somebody called out Kobe for never passing the ball, and all he did in that one game was like every time he touched the ball, he's like, I'm getting an assist tonight. You guys know what I'm talking about? I remember you know, you know what game I'm talking about? Yeah. Right. That's what it looked like with James Harden. And Dur- listen, I love Durant. I, I think like – I think Durant is so special and what he's doing off the injury. He is, he could fit in around anybody. He is unbelievable. I have nothing bad to say about Durant, but Harden and Kyrie right now, they're just dating each other and they're just feeling each other out. And it's only a matter of time before one of the two decides to show the other who they really are. And I'm curious to see how the other reacts to it. So basically, the representative is what we're getting right now from all yes. of these guys. The representative. Yes. Yeah. Now, what do you think if uh, you know uh, the, the Cleveland if uh, they if Andre Drummond gets a buyout and then all of a sudden he signs with the, the Nets because that's that's possible right now. Yeah. Yeah. My boy Zach Harper from the Athletic put that out the other day, and I don't I don't think that that's unreasonable. I think that's very possible to happen. I just don't – listen, I love Andre Drummond, but – all right, let's be real here. That's what we do on the show, right? Listen, Andre is a great – he's probably one of the greatest rebounders in the history of the NBA. Like, not Dennis Rodman, but, like, right in that next tier. One of the great rebounders ever. But that doesn't make him a great defender, right? Like, he's not he's not switching on defense to go pick up a guy. He's not – I don't know, like, and, and and here's the other part of Andre Drummond. Andre Drummond is still a post player. Is he going to be cool with being on a team where he's the fourth option, sometimes the fifth option, sometimes forgotten about for an entire half? Is he still going to run back on defense and defend the rim the, the way the Nets want him to if Kyrie or Harden or Durant don't throw him the ball for three consecutive possessions? Because the Nets don't need to. I don't know that the Nets need an Andre Drummond. They need Jared Allen, right? And, like, my dad was right. They need Jared Allen. They need somebody who just wants to defend the rim and wants to guard their man. How about Tyson Chandler or somebody like that, a veteran like well, him? Well, he's a little – he's a little hey, – Bobby, like, Bobby loves Tyson Chandler. I'm starting Bobby. to realize this. Every week he brings up Tyson Chandler. Tyson Chandler's 40 years old. <laughs> I don't know. He might be 45 by now. <laughs> Bobby, I had Bobby last year in the bubble. I was I was in the bubble for 82 straight days. I ran out of people to talk to. One of the Tyson Chandler, and uh, I was getting ready to cover for TNT a uh, a Houston Portland game because Tyson was on on Houston, and uh, you know I talked to him about the days in New York with Mello and 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 him and and, and Mello and the year J.R. Smith won Sixth Man of the Year and all that stuff. Like Tyson Chandler couldn't get off the bench in Houston last year. I, I just don't know if that's if that's the answer. Now, speak, speaking of the bubble, um, you know, I talk to the Nassis all, all the time. Oh, my God, my guy. Yeah, he was there the whole, you know, he was there for 70 days. I think he was probably there longer. How has that experienced it for you? Uh, crazy experience in my life. Um, Nerve-wracking going in, like thought your life was on the line, thought that I was – you know, making a big mistake, wondering, you know, I didn't know I'd be in there for 82 straight days when I left. Like Turner had originally planned for me only to be there for a certain amount of time. Then it kept on getting extended and extended and extended. Um, ended up being the the safest place on earth. What the NBA and Disney did was unbelievable. Tested every day on top of the redundancy of everybody wears a mask all the time social distancing, wash your hands, all that sanitizing. It was, it was, it was awesome. And the basketball part of it was crazy because I don't know how you guys feel, but like the thing that keeps me going every day, or at least before the pandemic was when I walk into a, an arena, I swear to God, and I'm not like, this is not a cliche. This is not BS. When I walk into an arena, I don't care if it's a preseason, regular season playoff or game seven of the NBA finals. Something happens to my body just naturally. I don't control it. It just happens. I walk into an arena and I get this adrenaline rush. I just feel something really weird. Like, yes, let's go. Let's go play. I would walk into these games with nobody there. 
even when even when the family showed up, it was like we were still sterile. And I never got that feeling. But yet I'm watching the NBA finals, like five feet in front of me. Greatest seats of my life I've ever had in my life was sitting in the bubble. And it was just, it was wild. Like having that basketball there and, you know, knowing everybody's watching at home, but it's just so different and so weird. Jared, do you think we're turning the corner a bit? Because, I mean, you have these conversations now from the NBA about possibly having an all-star game. We're going to have over 20,000 people at the Super Bowl. I know different uh, league, but yeah. promising news to hear that, you know, have some fans in the building for a big event like that. Uh, is it possible we're probably getting closer to maybe? I know you're not a doctor, but getting closer to uh, to seeing the light of day? Uh, thanks for that confidence, Bobby. Appreciate that. <laughs> um I got to tell you, like, I'm real hesitant about the All-Star game. I'm, I'm curious about why it's necessary. You know what I mean? Like, if we're canceling games, you know, on a Monday or Wednesday in January, that means something in relative terms towards standings, towards the playoffs. Why, why are we going to play a, an All-Star game that's an exhibition? Why are we bringing people together? unnecessarily and I mean really all of it's unnecessary but you know when you think about it like this is like I, I'm I'm confused about that um and I hope we get some clarity on that in the next few days um you know I know the NBA is going to do their best to keep everybody safe like they did in the bubble they did they, they did a tremendous job like like I said safest place in the world was in the bubble um I know we need to name an all-star team I totally get that we need to like it's for the history of the game more importantly, I think for the players, it's part of their contract. A lot of guys have bonuses in their deals. So we got to name all stars. I don't know that we need to play a game. Yeah, I'm in, I'm in agreement. We were, uh, me and some friends were talking about that yesterday. We were like, you know, they were talking about, you know, Atlanta is a possible destination. And I was like, Atlanta's kind of crazy right now, <laughs> along with LA. <laughs> so I was just like, you know, what are going to have? You, you, you know, players are going to, you know, you're going to fly players in. I think it's a bad idea. Um, I get why they would want to do it, but yeah. I think they should just like, like you said, just name the All Stars and do something virtually, uh, right. something like what the NFL is doing with the Madden game, uh, and just do it like that. I'm with you. You know, Jared, I really love the background you got going on here. I was hoping that you could possibly recommend some items to Ed because no, no matter how hard we try every week, Ed just doesn't want to put anything behind him. I like <laughs> no, but it's it. He's locked into that. Locked like that's in. his thing. Yeah. <laughs> well, he's ready for his mug shot any any second. That's what it is. I mean, Baron Davis also took some criticism to my my gold curtains, but I've decided to keep them just to to kind of spite him here on uh, Step in the Arena. <laughs> Why did Baron not? Why did Baron? Why Baron give you such a hard time? I, I don't know. I think he's a big fan of Ed's. Not so much a fan of mine. Oh, yeah. No, no. He got. He got on. He got on. Uh, he started getting on Bobby after Bobby criticized uh, James Harden, James saying Harden. Harden, Harden didn't step up late in uh, in the playoffs. Well, that's not wrong. Yeah. Thank you, Jared. No, you but are. I actually, I actually, you are a doctor. You are a doctor, Jared. I agreed with Barron just for the simple fact that, you know, they did get to the Western Conference Finals, but, you know, he, you know, the guy, he he works, he works hard. He got there, but, you know, obviously he needed some help and he didn't get, get the help he needed. Listen, when things go wrong for James Harden, he stops working, though. Like the year Kevin McHale got fired, he decided to come into camp not in shape and not ready to play. This year, he wasn't happy with management's decision, and he shows up into camp not – he didn't show up to camp, showed up in the regular season not ready to play. You know – He's been paired with so many stars over the last few years. Who he chose. Who he dunk. chose. I think, I think it's fair criticism. I really do, on a serious note. I'm with you. That's what I'm saying, Ed. Jared and Frankie – yeah. I don't know. Agree. Two against, two against what? Jared, I want to say, like, um, when you look at your career up to this point, you know, um, do you do you wonder, like, when you wake up in the morning, like, wow, you know, I've come this far? Because I, I remember, like, you coming in late nights, you tired doing voiceovers. Yeah. You got to hear Saul Steinberg's voice. <laughs> you had all these, you know. You gotta, I just you had a weird flashback. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So now, yeah. you know, you look at your career now and, you're a major figure at NBA TV. Um, you know, you get to talk to 
all the you know top players in the world and how's that feel it's awesome man um i feel like you know i feel like i put a lot of hard work in um and it's a lot of preparation you know i the the thing i love about the nba is that you know the community we all have whether it's on like twitter or like going to the barber shop or just on the street like people people love talking ball and and i do too right like but like it takes a lot of hard work and i'm not i'm not trying to make it sound like i've got like the most difficult job in the world cuz i don't right like it, i get to, i get to watch basketball and that's part of my job but you have to put in a lot of hours for it like and and people out there who are watching this i know you guys have a big audience of people who are just hardcore basketball junkies understand that if you want to do this for a living you can't just say you're a basketball fan. You can't just casually watch a couple games. And it's not even just about watching basketball. It's about how you consume the game from watching it to thinking about it to how you read the articles you read to how you read stuff on Reddit to how you read what's on Twitter to how you talk to people to how you make connections and build relationships. Um, and I, I feel like the most fortunate man in the world, you know, like, my wife says she doesn't watch what doesn't want to watch basketball tonight, but Edgar, I say it's part of my job. We got to watch this game tonight, right? Like it's the greatest thing ever, right? Like I never have to stop watching basketball and I love it. And the people I work with and, and the people at Turner, like the community we have at, at Turner sports, you know, the guys that are on tonight, obviously Charles, Kenny, Shaq, Ernie is the, the greatest human being on the face of the earth to be in a studio with those guys. It sucks right now that like we can't all interact because we all have to be separated anytime we're in the studio together. But that family is unbelievable and it makes going to work um, a lot of fun. And it's, it's amazing just to be able to talk ball and, and my, my, my feel like my goal, and I don't mean to just like be cliche about it, but, I truly try and digest every day before I go into the studio or actually while I'm in the studio, before I'm going on the air. Like if I'm home, if I'm the basketball fan at home, what do I want to hear about? Like what's, what's important to me. And that's what we really try and do every night, whether it's on TNT or NBA TV. Yeah. Um, you know, we lost uh, a great friend of yours uh, oh. and somebody we all, you know, cared about. And yeah. one of the nicest men I've ever met, you know, say Smith. And I, I just want to, you know, briefly, I want to hear like the relationship you had and how much impact he had on your life. Um, so my first ever show I did at Turner was back in 2012, right? Right when the lockout ended, right? When basketball picked up back in beginning of 2012, January. First ever show I did was with Brent Barry, Seku, Seku Smith and Dennis Scott. And then um, about three weeks ago, I was with Seku on his last show. And um, I, I hope people out there who are watching understand, like maybe they don't know who he is. Uh, I hope they read his stuff on NBA.com over the last 10 years, read his stuff before that in the Atlanta Journal Constitution, before that in the Indy Star. It's weird. This is, this is a weird business, you guys. I'm not telling you anything you don't know whether it's talking about basketball or whether it's talking about the media, there's, it, it's really hard to find somebody who everybody likes. And I'm not one to blow smoke, I, you know, I, but in, in this universe that we all, that the three of us live in here, say who's a rare breed. Like there's not a person you will meet who will talk trash or say a bad word about him. That's unusual in this business. I know <laughs> whenever my time comes, there's going to be plenty of people who are like, that guy was a jerk. <laughs> I get it. I, I totally get it. This guy went out of his way to mentor so many people. He went out of his way to be just a good guy. And, and I joke, like he was like this angry guy. Like he was like, he was like a curmudgeon a little bit where he was grumpy. But while he was grumpy, he had this smile on his face and he was laughing about it. And it was so like infectious. And he just, he just wanted to do his job and he loved his family. And for those of you who don't know, 
you know, I worked with them about, I don't know, three, four weeks ago on a Friday night. And then like three weeks, uh, I'm sorry. And then like three days later, we found out he had got, got COVID. I don't, I don't know how he got COVID. I don't know what the deal was, but he was supposed to be okay. I was texting with him. He's fine. And then all of a sudden he's on a ventilator and he's in a coma. And then we get a text that he's supposed to be okay. Like he's, he's going to be fine. Um, and then I got a call Tuesday that he was gone. Like it, I, I don't, it still doesn't feel real to me. It still feels like an outer body of experience where like, I don't understand how this shit works. Um, and I'm bothered by it, but like, it's, we're, we're going to miss Seku. Like we need more people like him. And that should definitely be the message too, for those, you know, at home when it comes to the pandemic and the yeah. virus, the seriousness of what's going on. Tough to uh, to segue there, I guess, in closing out uh, this segment here, Jared. We really want Sorry to about that. Yeah. You know, no, no, I love the words and opening up about a dear friend, and obviously, um, you know, our thoughts and prayers are with his family. Yeah, thank you, guys. Appreciate yeah. you taking the time with us tonight. Yeah. Uh, any uh, closing thoughts, Edgar, with Jared? No, nah, like I said, you know, Jared, you know, we haven't talked in a long time, but every time I see you on TV, on TV, I always tell my friends. I work with that guy, <laughs> you know, so, you know, uh, and just, you know, I'm just like, I'm proud of you, man. I, you know, Thank you. this is, I, I know there's more steps to come. I know Thank there's you. Gonna be something bigger than NBA TV that, you know, that's going to happen for you. Thank you. You know, we're always going to be like, you know, I can always say, Hey, that's my, a friend of mine, you know, so Thanks, proud of you. I think you still owe me some gear. So I, yeah. I appreciate it. <laughs> well, you know, he's hard to guard. So <laughs> man, this guy, we had some stories. <laughs> yeah, I appreciate you guys. Thank you, Bobby. It was great to chat with you, man. I love what you guys are doing, and I love anybody who's just talking ball, and and I hope people appreciate that and um, appreciate you guys for having me on. Thank you. Appreciate you coming on. Thanks, great stuff. Yeah.